In 1889, Yale coach Walter Camp selected the first All-America football team. The game has become more modern now, but it still remains a battle of wits between these men, the coaches. Some swore by the flying wedge, many moved on to the basic tee, and still others built their hopes around the wishbone. But the coaches have always been the architects of this Saturday afternoon spectacle. Wherever you venture and whatever the formation, college football is still wild and wonderful. Times have changed, haven't they? I'm Carm Koza head coach at Yale University and president of the American Football Coaches Association. While Walter Camp picked those early All-America football teams, we now have some 140 head coaches who take part in the voting. And here are the results. The coach's choice of the top collegiate football players of 1978. In the early days of college football, Waller Camp coined the phrase quarterback. But in those days, the quarterback could not pass or advance the football. All he could do was hand it off to the runner. But today, the signal caller does a lot more than just give up the football. It has often been called the most demanding position in college football. One thing is for sure, you can't win without a good one. The job requires a tremendous amount of leadership plus the diagnostic skill to slice a defense along the dotted line. 1978 proved to be such a remarkable year for college quarterbacks that the coaches selected two outstanding signal callers to share All-America honors. At Michigan, they had one of the all-time greats in senior Rick Lee. A regular over four seasons, Leach exhibited a balance of offensive ability unmatched in collegiate football history. He ran for more than 200 points and passed for more than 200 points while guiding the Wolverines to three straight Rose Bowl appearances. This left-handed trigger man not only quarterbacks the football team, but also guns runners at home as an all-Big Ten center fielder for the baseball squad. In his four years, Leach passed and rushed for a total of 79 regular season touchdowns, more than the previous NCAA mark. He is the Big Ten all-time total offense leader and holds most passing records at Michigan. The coach has rated another great quarterback on a par with Leach. He's senior Chuck Fusina of Penn State. During the last two campaigns, Fusina led State to a 21-1 regular season mark. And no one in Nittany Lion history has ever mastered the position any better. When you get to the line, you really, first thing you're looking for is what coverage they're in. And then after that, you try to, you know, you try to look at it and see if they're coming at it with a blitz. And um, as you're dropping back and you, you get a clear picture of what's going on. You're getting your timing done, the right steps. You think about setting up you know, proper position so the offensive line knows where you're at to help them block for you better. After that, it just happens. You know, you, you read and you throw. And uh, I don't know really how to describe it. It just comes natural after years of doing it over and over again. On top of Fusina's passing brilliance, Coach Joe Paterno and his team feel Chuck's strongest suit is leadership. The toughest job is during the pressure situations when the club is looking at you. And not just to um, you know, throw the key pass, it's just to, to settle the team together and be a good leader. And even if you just have to get the center and hand off for that one place, to, it's to get the club ready and, and for them to have the confidence in you to know that you're going to come through during the, the clutch play.
Yusina did not start until the fifth game of his sophomore year. Yet, he holds practically every passing mark in Penn State's record book. Penn State's Chuck Fusina and Michigan's Rick Leach, both quarterbacks, both Kodak All-Americans. So often, the quarterbacks get the glory in college football. But there are other unsung heroes who deserve cheers from the pretty ladies. Those men who form the wall of protection, the offensive line. Penn State running backs found gaping holes over senior tackle Keith Dorney's side, and no wonder. At 6'5", 260, Dorney simply blows his opponent out of the play. This coach's All-American insists there is nothing personal in the way he obliterates the opposition. I really uh, don't work up a hatred towards him at all. You know, I've been watching him all week on film and such, and, you know, certainly, uh, you know, it's very competitive out in the field, but, you know, unless that person, uh, you know, would do something to me that would, that would make me angry, uh, you know, usually we have a pretty good rapport, and, after the game, you know, we, after hitting heads all day, we go and, you know, talk to each other and, you know, see what's happening. After six years of frustration against Oklahoma, the Nebraska Cornhuskers in 78 rose to the top of the crop of the Big 8 with their upset victory over the previously unbeaten Sooners. Much of the credit belongs to senior tackle Kelvin Clark. Number 73's driving block steered the Huskers as the number one offensive team in the country to another showdown with Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl. Competition for the coaches All-America Center was fierce this past season, but junior Jim Richer, number 51 of North Carolina State, was a prime reason the Wolfpack is again headed toward a postseason bowl. Great tailbacks, are an almost yearly phenomenon at USC. Thanks to support from outstanding offensive guards like 6'6", 255-pound senior Pat Howell. Number 66's great joy is being the bullying guard on a sweep, for he knows his block will spring the ball carrier. Without his helmet, he's a jolly giant. But once strapped in, Sooner senior Greg Roberts becomes the coach's All-America Dynamo at the other guard spot. Never slow to get rolling, Roberts establishes his dominance immediately. I try to give him my best shot the first play of the game, you know, I try to set a tempo. But I like to run blocker because it's more contact. You know, I, I like contact. Roberts earned the Outland Trophy as the nation's best interior lineman and a berth on the coach's All-America team. Some 1,300 pounds of muscle in that All-American offensive line. Greg Roberts of Oklahoma, Pat Howell of USC, Calvin Clark of Nebraska, Keith Dorney of Penn State, and Jim Richer of North Carolina State. With the ever-growing popularity of the forward pass, 1978 was a vintage year for sure-handed clutch receivers. Missouri Tigers ballooned themselves into national prominence with an opening game upset of Notre Dame. As the gorgeous Golden Girls caught passes on the sidelines, the Tigers finished the regular season toppling Nebraska and earning a trip to the Liberty Bowl. Much of the credit must go to number 83 senior Kellen Winslow, the most productive tight end in Mizzou history. Coach Warren Powers views him as the irresistible object and the immovable force rolled into one. Kellen Winslow is a very unique individual, I think. I have never been around a tight end as versatile and as gifted as this athlete. 
He's got tremendous size. He's six foot six and 240, 45 pounds. He has the grace of a halfback. Kellen Winslow probably has as fine of hands as any tight end or any receiver I've ever seen. The closer it gets to the game, the better he catches. Winslow can push defensive backs around almost as effortlessly as he moves pieces on a chessboard. He's a tournament chess player, but hardly a pawn in the game. I see myself as the bishop, um, basically because of the way it moves. A lot of times bishops sneak up on you. They move at angles, and they really, they really be deceptive. They can go long range, or they can go short range. That's kind of how I see myself. A sure-handed receiver and punishing blocker, Kellen Winslow is the coach's choice for All-America tight end. Pitt fans have had plenty to cheer about since senior Gordon Jones took over at split end. During his four years as a starter, Jones high-stepped over most Pitt receiving records. How about 133 career receptions and well over a mile in yardage gain? The man they call too much has such a flair for collecting pick skins that players in the high school and college ranks are already emulating his unique style. One out of every five times Jones latches onto the ball, it's good for a touchdown. Dangerous game breakers Gordon Jones and Kellen Winslow are the coaches' picks as Kodak All-America receivers. This is Walter Camp Archway on the campus of Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut. It was here, around the turn of the century, that Walter Camp formulated many of the essential rules of the game as we know it today, quickly gaining the reputation as the architect of American college football. For years, Camp held the Yale coaching record for most victories. But in 1975, it was eclipsed by head coach Carmen Goza, this year's president of the American Football Coaches Association. With his fellow coaches, Goza spent thousands of hours evaluating game footage of potential All-American candidates. And it all started nearly 90 years ago, right here at Yale, with Walter Camp. Colorado State, the Ram mascot, has budding competition from senior defensive tackle Mike Bell. Number 76 runs the 40-yard dash in 4.7 and bench presses 340 pounds. A devastating choice for All-America. The other tackle slot is occupied by 6'5 senior Don Smith of Miami. Number 75 is so quick, he even makes tackles catching runners from behind. They call themselves the Crunch Bunch. And senior Al Harris of Arizona State leads the way. From his defensive end position, Harris, the destroyer, is a frequent visitor to enemy backfield. Senior tackle Dan Hampton has all the fire of an Arkansas Razorback and was rated one of the quickest defensive linemen in college football. Penn State fielded college football's stingiest defense against the run in 1978, with junior tackle Bruce Clark playing a key role. The Lions held opponents to a rushing average of under 55 yards a game. Clark makes sure he gets to the quarterback early and often. Every once in a while we get lucky beat the linebackers to what you say to punch. 
more than modest, Clark takes his place alongside other All-American defenders in Penn State history. Players like Mike Reed, Jack Hamm, Mike Hartenstein, and Greg Buttle. With Bruce Clark in the game, passers wish they had a rear view mirror strapped to their helmets. Clark was one of the prime reasons the Lions finished undefeated and ranked number one at the end of the regular season. One junior and four seniors are the coach's choice for the All-America defensive line. Once again, Bruce Clark of Penn State, Mike Bell of Colorado State, Don Smith of Miami, Al Harris of Arizona State, and Dan Hampton of Arkansas. Go, defense, go! Go, defense, go! Strong is six, weak is five. You are watching linebackers at work, calling defensive signals. Watch the draw! Meeting the runner head on. Make your brain! Five, five, five! Dropping back to protect against the pass. Linebackers, football's most versatile defenders. This year, Ohio State boasted one of the finest linebackers in senior Tom Cousineau. Number 36 is the Buckeyes' all-time tackler, breaking his own record of 185 set two years ago as a sophomore. At Notre Dame, the legacy of All-Americans continues from year to year, and senior Bob Golick is the latest to join the tradition. Golick is the only Irish player since athletic director Moose Krause to earn All-America honors in two sports. And it's easy to see the second is wrestling. The most kick I get is when a back will come right up the middle, and there's a big hole there, and I'm on the other side of the hole, and I've got him in a one-on-one -on -one straight shot. You know, whoever's toughest <laughs> is the one who holds that ground. Over his career, Golick made more tackles than any other Notre Dame player and also set a single game record for the Irish with 26. Bob Golick, the latest in a long line of Notre Dame All-Americans. The third linebacking spot was won by two-time Kodak All-American Jerry Robinson of UCLA. Robinson entered the 1978 season as one of the most highly rated players in the nation and more than lived up to his reputation. For the third straight year, he led the Bruins in total tackles while anchoring a rugged UCLA defense. Again, the All-American linebackers are Tom Cousineau, Ohio State, Bob Golick, Notre Dame, and Jerry Robinson, UCLA. And behind those All-American linebackers are the guys who make the clutch interceptions, the deep backs. One of the very best at that trade was number 27, junior Johnny Johnson of Texas. He has the open field speed to catch a halfback and then hit like a linebacker. For the Longhorns, Johnson picked off passes so perfectly they sometimes seemed intended for him. What is definitely intended is All-America honors for Johnny Johnson. Quickness of foot is of prime importance to a deep back. And not many can match a San Diego State senior named Henry Williams. Rounding out the All-American defensive backfield is senior Jeff Nixon of Richmond. He joins Johnny Johnson of Texas and Henry Williams from San Diego State on the defensive platoon. More than 20 ball carriers gained over 1,000 yards in 1978. Every section of the country had at least one ball carrier under consideration for All-America honors. In the Big Eight, it was Rick Burns and I am hip at Nebraska. Matt Suey powered Penn State to a perfect regular season. Tony Nathan was the spark plug of another high-powered Alabama team. North Carolina State's Ted Brown became the ACC's all-time ground gainer. And Georgia Tech's Eddie Lee Ivory set an NCAA single game rushing record with 356 yards. 
The coaches could select only three runners, but what a trio they are. When a young man scores 78 touchdowns in high school, he's welcome on most any college campus. So it didn't take long for Billy Sims to find a home in Norman, Oklahoma. Roll, baby, roll! In his early years, they called Billy Sims crazy legs because, as he says, I guess my legs tend to look like they're flying in all directions. In three of his final four regular season games, Billy Sims gained over 200 yards. He finished 1978 as the number one ground gainer and scorer in all of college football. Charging out of the unpredictable Sooner wishbone, Sim seems to fly through unfriendly skies. Coach Barry Switzer says, I don't know whether to buy him wings or shoes. Averaging an incredible seven and one half yards per carry, Sims' 1978 season was the best ever by a runner in Big Eight history. Clinching the coveted Heisman Trophy for Billy Sims, the supersonic Sooner. Like Sims, Southern California's Charles White is a junior and a non-stop flyer for three years now. Those lovely gals at Southern Cal have matched white move for move. The energetic white appears to both challenge and tease tacklers. His elusive moves, turning the secondary into a combination chess match and ballet class. A speech communication major, Charles White plays the piano when not stinging opponents with a swirling, aggressive style that carried the Trojans to their ninth Rose Bowl in 13 years. He can find a hole quicker than Johnny Carson can get a laugh. And USC coach Johnny Robinson is proud of the Trojans' all-time leading ground gainer. He's become one of the real leaders of our team. I, I don't know that I've ever been around a football player that I consider to be more competitive. I think we can move Charlie to cornerback, and he would enjoy playing the game with the, just as much as he does a tailback. Charles White, a Trojan war horse. In Baton Rouge on the Louisiana State campus, Charles Alexander is described as strong, durable, and enthusiastic. Feet up under your tail. Feet up under your tail. Give it a hop. Give it a hop. Give Possessing the instinct to run for daylight and the mental toughness to play when hurt. But there is one more skill that sets Alexander apart from the rest. Of all the many talents that Charles Alexander has, I think the most amazing is his speed. You see what I mean? First of all, I just try to get control of football and make sure I don't fumble or anything. And then I just try to use a combination of speed and power. And so I just try to get through the hole as quick as I can. The man who coaches this Titanic Tiger is Charles McClendon. Well, he has that speed that, uh, that you'd like to have. And, and the biggest and the most important thing is his, particularly his takeoff. For five yards, I think he's going full speed. I don't think that he can go any faster after that. And I think this is where a lot of backs, they have the good speed, but uh, it takes them a while uh, to kind of get warmed up and kind of move it down the field. But Charlie, in, in five yards, is going strictly full speed. He's the all-time single season and career rushing leader in the Southeastern Conference. He scored more points and more touchdowns than any SEC player ever. Charles Alexander takes his place with Charles White and Billy Sims to form an awesome All-America backfield. 
a backfield of record breakers from three of college football's major conferences. From the runners and passers through the defenders, thousands played football in 1978. Only a select 23 attained All-America honors in this 89-year-old tradition originated by Walter Camp. Once again, the coach's 1978 All-Americans. First, the offense. Now the defense. We coaches would like to pay tribute to the inventive mind of a one-time Yale coach named Walter Camp, who initiated this once-in-a-lifetime honor, the All-America football team. 